Hey campers, I am the head counselor of the Apollo Cabin, which means I get the wonderful task of teaching you all arts and crafts. Uh, today we're gonna learn how to make our own shiv. Um, oh yeah, Chiron said he wanted me to remind all of our overeager campers and the entire Aries cabin that the shivs we will be making today are not to be used to harm other demigods. Until Friday, during our weekly game of Capture the Flag, in which you can do whatever you want, I don't really care. Okay, uh, do we have any questions? I've got a question. Uh, yeah, you, uh, new camper. Uh, my name's Olivia. Actually, don't need to know your name. Um, seeing as you're asking a question on your very first lesson of arts and crafts, probably not gonna need to use your name for very long. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, I'm nine years old and I thought it was a little bit weird that you were not only teaching us how to make knives, but encouraging us to use them. Um, is that like really a good decision? Yeah, it's probably not the best decision to teach you how to make a shiv. Um, but Chiron says it's to protect you from monsters when you're out in the real world, so. Well, I think that's, that, that's kind of, that kind of sucks, actually. Yeah, no, it's definitely messed up um, that a nine-year-old would need to protect themselves and, you know, fight to the death every day. Uh, we actually just had a war about it, um, and the gods won, and then, you know, Percy Jackson was kind of like, hey, can you suck less? And then they were like, yeah, totally. And then we had another war about it, about like a year later, um, and they, didn't actually get any better, but we got some cool Roman friends now. Um, and then, you know, like my dad showed up in mortal form. I don't know, dude, just shut up and do your arts and crafts. Okay, first step. So what you're gonna do. Hey folks, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be starting a series called Sarah's Arts and Crafts Corner. Today I'll be teaching you how to make your very own Annabeth Chase necklace. So I've made several in the past um, because once again, I am an Annabeth Kinney um, and I like them a lot. I've got some, okay, I've got some, <laughs> I've got some videos up on my TikTok that kind of go through the process and I have some pictures on my Instagram of the, the beads close up. So if you wanted to look at those as well, you can definitely do that. The links to my Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and a bunch of other stuff is down in the description or on my page. So if you like what you see today and you wanna see more of it, go ahead and subscribe and comment and let me know if you like these types of videos. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So what you wanna do first is get the supplies and I'll pass it over to Sarah of the past. Yeah, so I just pulled into Michael's and we are gonna go in there and get everything that you would possibly need. So. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is wear a mask because we are still in a global pandemic. So, oh, that was my car. Please wear a mask. All right, so here I've got all the things that you will need to make your Camp Half-Blood necklace. So 
So you don't actually have to make Annabeth's necklace specifically, but it does have the most beads that we know of and it has been explained the best by Rick. So that's what we're gonna end up doing. Annabeth's necklace has nine beads, one for each year that she was at Camp Half-Blood. All in all, we've got her beads right here. So Rick actually only talks about what the designs of seven of the beads are. So that means that two of the beads are just kind of left up to artist's interpretation. So you can use the designs that I use on my beads or you can come up with your own. The designs that I use actually came from a Google search. I found the design on Grey Lady, no, Grey Bird 4's it Etsy page and I thought that they were really really cute so the beads that I use are not actually my idea I'll link their Etsy page down in the description as well so you can find out where I got the idea from she talks about the first three in the books we've got Talia's tree centaur and the prom dress a Greek tyrene 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 I don't know how to say it trireme on fire, a hammer, a star, the trident, the golden fleece, the labyrinth, the coral pendant, and ring. And then the Empire State Building. You notice that there's actually not a bead for the Titan's Curse because the Titan's Curse, if you'll remember, takes place during the winter and beads are only given out during the summer. So those are the design. So those are the, so those are the, so those are the, so those are the oh my gosh. So that's how I'm gonna make my necklace. I, I can't speak today. All right, so now that we've gotten all of our supplies, we're gonna go ahead and get started on painting the beads. You're gonna wanna take a bobby pin. I'm gonna be a beauty guru here. You're gonna wanna take a bobby pin and you're gonna wanna like unbend it like this. This is how you're gonna be able to paint them. You can use other pins and stuff too if you have like a safety pin or just whatever else you need, but I find it's a lot easier to have something that you can put it on so that when you're painting it, it won't go everywhere and you won't get paint quite all over your hands. So it's just a lot easier to do it like that. Alrighty. So first what you wanna do is you wanna apply a, a base coat of paint to your beads. So two of the beads actually have white as their base coat. So I am going to paint those two white first. And usually what I'll do is apply two coats just because it'll look better. So yeah. But like I already have paint all over my fingers and I've literally only painted one. Ah! Alrighty, so we got the first two base coats done. The next one that we would do would be the centaur and the prom dress, and I usually do a yellow color for that. The one after that is the Greek ship on fire. I do a light blue color for that. The hammer that I use kind of a darkish red for. The star, which I use this kind of dark blue for the labyrinth which has this light red color and then the empire state building finally which i use this kind of cool like shimmery blue for i'm gonna go do those and then i'll check back in here in a little while enjoy some montage footage of that because that'll be fun <laughs> it's a bead painting montage and I'm painting beads and listening to the Lightning Thieves musical. It's really good, so everyone should go check it out. Actually, it's on Spotify. Please support wiki, the wiki. creators. It's a better adaptation than the movies. Uh, so yeah, Lightning Thieves musical. Word. All right, we got our base coat done. When those dry up, then I'm gonna go back to painting. So we'll have two coats on them and then we'll start the designs. It's time to paint some beads. Yeah, we're painting more beads, but I'm not gonna make you sit through it. Second coat, done. All right, so now that the second coat is done, we're gonna let those dry for a little bit and then we're gonna get started on the designs. So the first one is gonna be Talia's tree. I'm just gonna draw a pine tree and outline it in black. And I use a little bit of brown paint because I don't have a brown paint pen. So I use a little bit of brown paint to color on this stump. Next, we got the centaur in a prom dress. I'm gonna start out by drawing the centaur. So I'm gonna take some of that brown paint from the tree stump. I'm gonna make the centaur's body and its leg. So then I'm gonna draw on his top half, his human half. I'm gonna use a more flesh colored tone for that. And then, 
I draw his like head, his torso, his arms, and black hair. I don't know, it's always really messy and bad. Uh, and then I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit before I come back and pencil in or paint in his prom dress with the pink, what color is this? With the purple paint pen. Next, we got the Greek ship on fire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this kind of bronzish, goldish paint pen. I'm gonna draw the ship on and then I'm gonna come back in with the red paint pen, which I don't know what I did with it, but I'm gonna take the red paint pen and I'm gonna draw the fire on. Um, I usually use the white paint pen as well to do the sails. All right, so now we got the hammer. I'm gonna take the silver paint pen, use that to draw on the main part of the hammer, and then the black to draw on the handle. Next, we got the star. So I'll use the silver paint pen to draw on a star and then kind of like go throughout the rest of the bead and do little, little sparkles. Now it's time for the tridents. We're going to take the green paint pen that I used earlier. When you paint it onto the black, it actually looks a little bit lighter. So we're just gonna draw the trident on there. And there you go. So I just used the green paint pen on the trident and you couldn't really see it on the black. I messed up my bee. So I actually have some metallic paint pens that I used. You can use blue, I think shows up a lot better. I use the metallic to just kind of go over that trident to make it stand out a little bit better. Next we got the golden fleece, which is actually, I think, my favorite bead. Other than the centaur in a prom dress, just because it's so funny. So I'm going to take the gold paint pen uh, that I talked about with the Greek ship uh, and draw on the ram's body, the horns, and everything like that. Up next, we got the labyrinth. In the middle, it has a blue delta. So I'll use a, a blue paint pen to draw the delta in the middle. And then from there on, I use the bronze to draw the maze around it. And lastly, we've got the Empire State Building. So I usually take the silver paint pen, draw on the Empire State Building, make it like really skinny, as skinny as I can. And then I outline it in black and I use the gold paint pen as little windows throughout all of it. So there you go. And there you go, those are all of the designs. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're going to paint a nice varnish on it so that it will not chip. Now the beads are all painted. Um, they are not the best in the world, but I can never claim to actually be an artist. I'm, I'm genuinely not that great at arts, but I like doing it. So, you know what? If you enjoy it, do it. Who cares if you're not the best? That's the message of today. If you, Who cares if you're not the best at whatever you're doing? If you enjoy it, then do it and go for it. So there you go. That's the message from Sarah today. I don't know. Um, anyway, so now that we have successfully painted the beads, it is time to thread them. You're gonna wanna take your thread, and what I usually do is I just kinda like put it around my neck and guess what a good length for a necklace would be and then add some to it, just cause. So mine's gonna be, I don't know, maybe I should measure this out and give you like actual inches, but nah, no, nah, that's not how we do stuff. We guess to make here. So I'm gonna make it about this long, that's really long. You wanna make sure when you're threading it on there, all of the beads are facing the same way. Cause if they're not, then it can get really frustrating. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and bead this up. Alrighty, so when all of your beads are on the thread, um, if you're making Annabeth's necklace, you wanna go ahead and put on your ring and your coral pendant. Coral? Coral. Yeah, that's the right word, right? Okay. Um, what I usually do is make sure that like the ring and the uh, pendant kind of like 
they kind of straddle the star. Once you have gotten everything on the necklace that you want to be on the necklace, what I usually do is I even it out and then I tie knots like across from each other. So like right here and right here, just so the beads won't slip too much. You don't have to do this step, but it does help when you're like actually wearing the necklace. If you don't have a type of clasp that you're using, cause I usually don't, here's a way to tie it off. Get a, an extra piece of thread that's about five or six inches long. Take your the two ends uh, and you're gonna want to lay them next to each other. Not to where they're crossing, but where they're laying next to each other. Then you're gonna wanna take your extra piece of thread, make it into a loop. Don't tie it or anything, but just make it into a loop like this. Then you're gonna wanna put that underneath your thumb. So the way I'm holding it right now is the way you're gonna wanna have it held. You're gonna wanna have the two ends of the necklace and the loop pinched underneath your thumb, like this. So then you're gonna take the long end of the extra thread and you're gonna wanna wrap it around all three of the other strings a couple times, I would say three or four. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the end, the long end again, and you're gonna slide it back through the loops that you just made. So you see the loops on there? You're gonna take this thread and you're gonna put them back through it. You can also use a needle if you wanna do this, thread the end of the string into the needle. Then when you've looped it all the way through, you're gonna take both ends of the smaller one and you're gonna pull it tight. So to differentiate, I would say tie one knot at the end of each of this, the smaller thread and cut it loose. And then at the end of the rope that's like connected to the actual necklace, tie a double knot. And there are a million other ways to do it to where you can like loosen it and tie it back up. There, there are so many that you can find on YouTube as well. So if you don't like this style or if it's too complicated, you can also just look it up and you know do your own kind. I'm not very good at explaining this part because I can barely do it myself. So I would say outside research is always helpful. And there we have it, folks. We are done with the necklace. And if you see here, you can adjust it if you just pull it through. Alrighty. So I have some exciting news as well now that we finished the necklace. Um, the necklace that you saw me make today will be given away. So you can enter for a chance to win the necklace. There are some rules for the giveaway. Like for instance, you need to follow me on TikTok and Instagram and be subscribed to the YouTube channel. There will also be a Google form that you're gonna fill out um, that will let me know uh, what your usernames are on various platforms. Uh, how to contact you if you win, so like Instagram or TikTok. And it's also going to ask you if you are 18. So here's the thing, in order to enter the giveaway, you must, must have parental consent. So if you are below 18, if you are not yet legally an adult, I'm gonna need you to ask your parents before you enter the giveaway because I don't want you to give your address out to a stranger on the internet without first asking your parents. That's a little unsafe. If you're over 18, enter to your heart's delight, but I will be needing parental consent if you are under the age of 18. But don't worry, I'm not gonna ask for your address unless you've actually won the giveaway. So I won't be needing your address when you sign up for the Google Forms or anything like that. It'll just be afterwards. Anyone can enter regardless of location, doesn't matter where you live, but you will have to follow those rules that I just set out. So the giveaway is going to last two weeks. Um, so this will be the deadline right here. Cause I don't know when I'm gonna publish this video. So I hope that you guys enjoyed making a necklace with me. If you liked it, please let me know in the comments so we can continue this series if you guys want it to be a series. Also, if you actually made a necklace based on this tutorial, please send me a picture on Instagram, tweet it at me, send me a TikTok, do whatever. I definitely wanna see it, that would be awesome. So please send it my way. <laughs> So like I said in the last video, we've got a discussion question for you. So this one comes from David, I'm not gonna try and pronounce your other names because I don't want to offend you. I'm just really bad at pronouncing things. Anyway, so David asks, what's your favorite Persebeth moment? My favorite Persebeth moment is in The Last Olympian during the Battle of Manhattan 
when Annabeth instinctively takes the knife for Percy in her shoulder. Percy had not told her beforehand that that was where his Achilles spot was. And that's just like a soulmate moment. Like Annabeth instinctively knew where Percy's Achilles heel was. Like she knew and she didn't even have to be told. And Annabeth, like she's in the middle of battle. She doesn't have time to think about what's going on. She just dives. She just gets this gut feeling and she dies and she saves Percy's life because Annabeth is the thing that ties Percy to the mortal world. Oh my gosh. And, and right afterwards, when he like goes feral and screams at everybody to stay away from her, it's so good. So that is my favorite Percy Beth moment is during the Battle of Manhattan. I want to know what you guys' favorite Percy Beth moment is. So please leave those in the comments. And also, if you have any other questions for me for next video, please let me know. I absolutely love seeing that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you had a whole lot of fun because I had a whole lot of fun making it for sure. If you guys like this content, please subscribe. That would mean a whole lot to me and follow me on my other social medias, which will be listed down below. Um, so last time I ended by saying carpe that diem and I really hated that. So maybe I should just say, get out there and seize the day. Newsies. Now's the time to seize the day. Dude, I don't even know. Bye.